Excellent. Praise the Lord. All right, folks, we might uh, open the word and turn to Genesis chapter 3. Uh, just while we're, while we're heading there, I'll just share a, a little Parker story before we get into it. Um, we are talking at dinner last night and uh, the, the topic of the talk sort of came up and, and, and Parker sort of was like, Dad, you're giving the talk again. Yeah, Parker goes, is that a good thing? He goes, oh, that's so boring. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, oh, you go for so long. He goes, but it's okay, Dad. You also inspire me with the things you say. So I'll let you all, I'll let you all take what you can tonight. It's either going to be too long or hopefully it's good stuff. But um, I just want to talk about taking responsibility for your own actions tonight. And um, I know I've shared it before, a story about me and my cousin growing up where we'd broken a, or he'd broken a window. My mum got be angry and, and kept smacking me with the big jam spoon, broke it on my bum. You know, it was, it was a lot of tears, a lot of laughter, a lot of crying, um, you know, a bit, bit of blood and whatnot. And, um, and then when the moment of danger passed, my cousin put his hand up and proclaimed that it was him, that he was the one that had done everything wrong. And, you know, since the beginning of time, Having, having to take responsibility for our actions has been something that mankind has, has struggled with and it's something that, that I believe, you know, as I look back on my life now, that you can see that it has gotten worse and you know, the, the consequences for that have become more and more severe, whether it's on a worldwide stage or, or whether it's something that you see you know, in, in the schoolyards, in, in your local community, even within, you know, your own sort of family unit and whatnot. But um, we're going to read of, of Adam and Eve here in Genesis 3 and, and verse 9, just a couple of scriptures here. And, and, the Lord called, oh, sorry, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree. So not only at that point does Adam, Adam turn around and go, It was her fault and you gave her to me. <laughs> You know, so instantly Adam blames God, you know, by referencing that the woman that, that, that he had blessed her with. And, you know, and then obviously we go on here and, and the woman then said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. And quickly that it, that it wasn't her fault, that, that, that she'd been tricked by this serpent and that then she'd eaten it. And we know that in the beginning, as, as God created the heavens and the earth, you know, he, he brought all things into being. He, he created and he chose man not just to be in the like image of God, but also to have dominion over the whole earth. So what we, what we see, and we read this as we look at Moses leading the Israelites you know, th through, uh, through the wilderness to the promised land, this, this, and we read this a lot in the Old Testament, this cycle of, of God blessing man, man ignoring God and man ignoring God again and God then coming back and, and blessing man and, and man ignoring God and this, this everlasting cycle and it's something that it has become a more, more and more of a constant to where, you know, to where we are today as a generation and as a, as a society and, and obviously as we, 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 we look at this, the story of Adam and Eve it's this, it's this generation, it becomes this blame game and um, for me personally, I get quite uncomfortable. You know, a few times a year, we'll go up and stay a few days or whatever with my with my dad and my stepmom. But my my stepmom's a pretty candid a candid woman, shoots from the hip, and will tell you how it is. And you're in no sort of frame of mind of of of, of what she says. Like you know exactly where you stand with her. And she she talks quite a lot about some of the stuff that I did particularly as a teenager and the, the behavior that I had and you know you wear sometimes in life you wear a lot of shame for the things you do you 
And it doesn't matter, like, you know, we've, we know that, that, you know, God forgives us if we repent and if we turn away and, and, and God will bless your life. And, and we know that, but it doesn't take away sometimes shame and, and discomfort that you and I might feel when people bring up moments in your life that you're not proud of. And, you know, and it's not important what, what she would bring up or anything like that. Um, but, and she's quite candid about the things I said and even some of the stuff she says, I don't know whether I did or not. It just seems like so long ago and, 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 an, and another life. But the one thing she always said was that it didn't matter what I'd done or, or how or, 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 or anything like that. The moment that I'd been caught or, or needed to be pulled into line, I, I'd take my licks yeah, you know, for anyone who doesn't know what it is, I'd, I'd take my punishment. I, I'd accept whatever consequences you know that there were for my action. My brother was a bit different, but it was it was something that you know for me I've, I've I sort of I like the thing I've always done through life. But as a society, we we live in a place now where it's always somebody else's fault. You know, we look at you know, generational unemployment for 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 an example where. There are services and things set up and, and, and people are quick to blame you know, their parents and their grandparents and other people for circumstances they find themselves in. But when it comes down, when it comes down to an individual making a decision to, to change their life or to have the circumstances in their life changed, it's easier than to put in, put in the hard yards. It, and rather than doing that, it's easier just to accept, well, this is, this is my lot because this is what's been given to me. And I remember you know, when I was homeless at 16 and, and it was tough. And, and we might just go to Genesis 4 as well. But it was, it was pretty tough. And, but not a night went by where I didn't, you know, or I didn't hope that life or want life to be different. I didn't want to be that to be my lot in life. You know, 20 years down the track that I was sleeping under a tree, you know, wherever it was or on the beach and that that's, that's what my life had become. But there was always a hope that, and a desire for life to be different. And, and I just think about, you know, our society at the moment is, 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 riddled, is riddled with issues and sometimes circumstances are beyond people's control. Um, you, sometimes we find ourselves in, in situations that you wouldn't wish on anybody, but particularly when it's of our own when of, of our own making when when we've made some poor decisions and for me you know while I wanted my life to be different the reason why what reason why I was on the streets was 100% my fault you know it was it was nobody else's that that put me there regardless of my age except for my own my own uh, selfishness and my own stupidity and 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 for us as a society we, we you know we see laws being made and, and things like that where we look at disciplining children and, and over generations that's now changed where in, in some cultures, you know, or, or, or in, in a new age parenting, it's frowned upon to, to be able to even physically maybe discipline your child or, and this is not a talk about that whatsoever, but just, just as an example or as, a, as an educator to be able to you know, to be able to correct children in a classroom or in the, work, in the workplace, you know, to be able to correct behaviour that's not appropriate. It's harder and harder, and that's not my timer, whoever's phone that is, so it's not that long yet. But, you know, we find ourselves in situations where, where moral values and standards and things like that that have kept society together have, have, been, thrown, have been thrown out the window and in honour of, of just making sure everyone, every, you know, everyone sort of gets a that a boy and a pat on the shoulder. I remember growing up playing football and you'd play in a losing team and over summer you'd train just to make sure you could do better the next year. And, and now our, our children are given participation medals and things like that just to recognise you had to go. But you know, to be able to learn from our failures and, and learn from our mistakes is this incredible experience that, that you and I will have. You know, because otherwise what happens is we get older and the real issues of life come and we have no idea how to take responsibility for our own actions. You know, we have, we have, no, we have no idea how to cope when things don't go our own way. And we read in verse 6 of Genesis 4 about Cain and Abel here. And, and the Lord said unto Cain, 
Why art thou wroth, and, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou dost well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over, over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass that when they were in the field, that Cain rose up and, and against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I, am I my brother's keeper? Now, and while we're turning over to um, 1 Samuel 15, um, we, we, read, we read about Cain and Abel, how, how they both offered this sacrifice before the Lord, that, you know, that, that, Cain's, that Cain's sacrifice failed to please God. He became, he became jealous of Abel and, and, and then ended up raising up to, to kill his brother. And Cain failed to take responsibility for what he'd put before the Lord. You know, he, he failed to recognize you know, what, he, what he had given to the Lord and became jealous of the fact that someone, you know, his brother in this instance was, was better than his. And then even trying to bluff, I sort of read it as he sort of tries to bluff God a bit, you know, am I my brother's keeper? Why would I, why would I know where he is? And, and all that God asks of us is that in any situation we find ourselves in to be able to, to give our best, to be able to give the best that we have to the Lord. Not keep not keeping anything back for ourselves, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you know, how how much we're able to give, or or time, or anything like that. But it's the best that you would give. You know, if you're a if you're a mother or a father, you want to give the best of yourself to your child. You know, when you're when you're in paid work, you want to be able to give the best of yourself, you know, to your to your employer to put in to put in a, a good day's work. And it's no different with with a relationship with God. He asks that we put our best foot forward in every single situation. And, you know, and we know that Cain has the goal to ask, well, why would I know where my brother is? And you know, when he was embarrassed that God didn't, didn't respect what he was given, you know, he, made, he made the matters worse by, by killing his brother. And you know, for you and I, we, we can't let things get in the way of, of, of what we give God. And, and whether that's you know, being envious or jealous of other, of other people and, and what other people can do compared to what we can do or, or what we perceive that we lack whereas others have got more. You know, we know we can pray to God and God does things for us. We can pray to God and God changes our circumstances, our lifestyle, you know, the, the, the thoughts we have in our head. But all God really wants is that we would give the best that we could to him and in any way that we lack or anywhere we feel that we lack, that God would change, God would fill that gap. You know, we read in the scriptures that, that when we are weak, that, that, he is, that he is strong. And I think that's a great thing to know, you know, we don't have to be perfect when we come before, when we come before God. We don't have to have life together, you know, all the all the zeros in the bank account or, or the greatest of jobs or, 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 or the easiest of life. All we have to do is be present and give what, we are, what we're able to. And we read 1 Samuel 15 and just in verse 1. Samuel said unto, unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thou sayest, the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel and how he laid wait for him in the way and when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman and infant and suckling and, and ox and sheep and camel and ass. And you know, Saul grabs the army, he gets up to go do the will of God, which was to annihilate the Amalekites, to rip them out of the ground, you know, root and root and stem, you know, complete destruction to leave no prisoners. But what does Saul actually do? Saul begins to think. And for for us, the human race, the worst thing we can do is begin to think. You know, you, um, I work in I work in uh, risk management for an insurance company, and I do a lot of workplace rehab. And any company on earth can have the greatest systems and processes, procedures in place to make something the safest, you know, most efficient environment. And then you add people to the mix where they think and it all falls apart. 
And that's what happened here. We read down in verse uh, 13. And Samuel came to Saul and, and, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in mine ears and the lowering of the oxen which I hear? And then in verse 18. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And, Samuel said, and Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have bought Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the, people of the, but the people took of the spoil. You know, the king here, again, the people did it. They, the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Has the Lord, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. You know, one, you've got here the king, the ruler of the people, God's anointed over, over the house of Israel, you know, failing, failing to sort of take ownership of his people, but then pointing the finger at them and then almost back at God, but they did it for you, God. And, 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 what, and, what, does, and what does Samuel say? That, he would ra- that God would ha- rather have his people obey than delight in burnt offerings. That you and I, we can put whatever it is we think before the Lord. You know, we, can, we can do things and go, oh, we're doing this for you, Lord. We're doing this for you. But all, all God asks of us is just that we obey him. Just that we, we let ev- put everything else to one side and we just follow after the Lord in any situation that we find ourselves. And at this point, you know, Saul, Saul assumed that his thoughts were enough. He assumed that he knew what was, what was better for God's people than what God knew for God's people. And, and God doesn't just reject the sacrifice, but he actually rejects him because of this as, as king over Israel. He, he rejects you know, the, the inheritance that could be to come for Saul because, because he, he didn't obey and when God's, God asks us to do something, folks, it's not a suggestion. When we're asked to do something, well, there's an expectation that we would put him first and, and put his instruction to us first. There's a saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. But we know that those who will do the will of God will abide forever. Amen. So I guess, what's the point of all this? You know, what, is, what, is the, what is the point of, of, of what we've read so far? We might go to Matthew 5. Not only has society moved away from recognizing and wanting to please God, you know, we we can see that all over in in the standard of living that's become acceptable, not just in little Adelaide, South Australia, but, or Australia even, but uh, but across the globe, that this world, you know, from you know, in, in, to, to sort of quote the you know, the eighteen hundreds, from the four corners of the globe. Well, the four corners of the earth, there's no four corners in a globe, but over the four corners of the earth, man has universally rejected God. There may be pockets of people around the place that that hold firm the gospel of Christ, that hold firm the word of God in their life, but as a, you know, if you were to put a percentage on it, the majority of the world has has rejected God not just the word of God, but the standards that would be outlaid in the word of God, the salvation that God has in store for his people. And, and Paul warns us of this when he writes to Timothy that men would be lovers of their own selves, that they would covet what others have and would desire what others have. They would have no self-control, be unthankful people. They would be an unholy people that wouldn't recognize God, that they wouldn't recognize and they would be unthankful just in, 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 in general in society and, and, and others, that they would focus on their own self-interests and the things that they needed to get ahead. But no matter what people have done, you know, 
There's a failure to accept your own consequences. You know, quite often you can see someone that will come before a judge. You know, there'll be a trial and there'll be people that will provide statements and evidence and, and things like that. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how overwhelming the situation can be. The person will sit there and go, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. They're all wrong. But for you and I, brothers and sisters, you know, this is what this world throws at us. This is what this generation throws at us is, is not just standards that take us away from the word of God, but people that would fail, fail to take responsibility for the decisions and the choices that, that they would make. That people would stick their heads in the stand and avoid confronting you know, what's been done, that there would be many wide and varied things to justify an individual's behaviour. You know, we know, um, and I take no, I take mental health quite seriously, and and the and obviously, you know, there are people that significantly suffer with with illnesses, not just of the mind, but but pain related things and and physical disabilities and and things like that. But there are people, but but then there are people that will use things to justify behaviour. You know, oh, I'm a. I can, I, can, I can function in life over here fine, but when it comes to teaching my children right from wrong, when it comes to loving my wife, oh, I've got this illness and it affects my behaviour. I, I, I will send, I will send my, my, my partner to work 60 hours a week, but I won't, but I won't do anything because I've got this wrong with me and, and, I can't do, and I can't do anything. And I just ask us tonight, what does God have us to do? What would God ask us to remember? We read in Galatians 6, to be not deceived that God is not mocked and whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You know, what, do we, what do we give when we prioritise? You know, will we avoid problems and blame others? Or do we think we know better than God? You know, the choice is ours because we read about what God wants us to do. In Corinthians God asks us to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith, to prove your own self, to know, to know not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except that you would be a reprobate, or another word is, is immoral or corrupt or bad, that you and I would look in our own spiritual mirror in the morning. You know, every, every chance we get and examine ourselves, you know, are we where Christ would have us to be? Are we where the word of God says that, says that we should be? Or when we look in the mirror, is it, is it we seeing something back that, that we don't recognize ourselves anymore? You know, I remember just before I came to the Lord, I mucked up pretty badly one night and, and I just looked at myself in the mirror the next day and I don't know, I've never thought about it since and I never thought about it beforehand, but I just imagined, you know, Brendan the child looking back at, looking at the person in the mirror being so ashamed of the person that he saw in front of him and it was that moment in time that made me remember the testimony of my housemate and how his life had changed and how God had changed his life you know it was nothing that he did but you know the Holy Ghost came in and he allowed God to change his life you know and then that and then that happened to me but for you and I when we look back at what's what's in front of us you know there's, there's two options. We grin and bear it and we walk on or we then, we, we are able to seek the Lord and allow God to change our life, to allow us to shape him to be who he would want us to be, to be his son or his daughter, you know, to, put him, to put him first in that. And in Matthew 5, 23, we read, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and thou rememberest thy brother has ought against thee, leave thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to their brother and come and offer thy gift. You know, we need to sort our issues out. Whether, whether there be issues in the faith or, or in your family or, or, out there in, or out there in the world, you know, God doesn't want us to dwell on it. You know, I, I, I tell my kids that there's no, there's no, you know, you don't, there's no crying over spilt milk. And I had to get Olivia to go and find out what that, what that meant. You know, it's an old man saying apparently, but you know, God wants us to sort our issues out. 
He wants us to get on with, with his work and not worry about the things that can distract us from him. And it doesn't matter who it's with or what's happened or anything like that. God wants us to, to go, to reconcile and then to move on with him. And if we're unable to reconcile, then we can't move on with the Lord. And it doesn't matter the situation, you know, because when the Holy Ghost was first poured out in the book of Acts, the excitement of the gospel was moving forward and people were coming to experience you know, Christ in their heart, you know, the Holy Ghost coming inside of them. We read that after that first great revival that the people dwelt together and had all things in common. And that's what God wants of us, to dwell together together to be unified of the Holy Ghost and to have all things in common. That God would be first in every situation. Matthew 6. Just a, just a page over, a couple of scriptures just to finish. You know, common stuff here, but we read in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take the thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And you know, God first in every situation. It doesn't matter the mountain, the trauma, the hardship, the obstacles that we have in our life. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whatever the, the thing we put in front of it. But if we just put God first, he will sort it out. And that's where our faith needs to lie, is that God will sort it out. Everything else will work out as long as he becomes number one, not just in lip service, but in actions and in deed and in everything that we do. We can't change what's happened yesterday and tomorrow will never come. All we can do is work out where we stand today, what decisions and things we do today. We can seek and speak to people. We can spend time pouring out our heart, you know, to your, to your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, your pastor, your whoever. But people's words, while they may be comfort, are only temporary. But victories in Christ, you know, moments in Christ where you feel God change your circumstance, change the direction of your life, these things last forever. We read that, that every good tree brings forth good fruit and every corrupt tree brings forth corrupt fruit. And we know that the actions and the things that we do, you know, both that are seen, that, that are unseen, God will, God, will reveal, God will reveal the motives behind it. God will reveal the intentions of our heart and the direction that we should go. You know, it, it's, it's, that, it's that simple, folks, that, you know, we can bluff, we can bluff each other, we can, we can smile and be happy and, and whatever, but... You know, the Bible tells us that every knee will bow and that every tongue will confess. And that's, that's us before the Lord. There will come a day where, where our knee will bow, our tongue will confess, and, and, and our fruits will, will, be, will be open and bare for all to see. You know, we know that, that the God is not mocked. And if you're visiting and observing today, the one thing God wants you to do tonight... We read that Jesus talking to a ruler at the time, Nicodemus, at night time. And Nicodemus recognised that Jesus could not do the things he did except he be of God. And, and Jesus says to him that except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, that you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And anyone here tonight, young or old, male or female, if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, that can happen tonight. The Bible commands to be born of water. There's a baptism tank here behind the curtains. We can, we can help you with that part, to turn away, to change your old way of life. And then you would be filled with the Holy Ghost. You would speak in another tongue it talks about in the Scriptures. You know, that's nothing that we can help you with. We can pray with you and support you, but that God would, God would bless your, your act of faith tonight, that he, that he would reveal it to you. You would be able to receive the Holy Ghost and you know that because you speak in tongues and God, and God will change your life. Brothers and sisters, let us walk on in the Lord. Let us not worry about the, the things that, that are happening in the world. Let us always be prepared, good and bad, to choose and seek first the kingdom of God, to take responsibility where we need to take responsibility in action where we need, and where we need to take action, that we all be standing faithful the day the Lord returns. Amen.